What's up, YouTube? So, uh, I just wanted I just wanted to talk about one of the most underappreciated things in this game as a tutorial, right? So most tutorials in fighting games, they just teach you how to attack, basically what your basic attack buttons are. They teach you how to walk backwards, you know, how to walk forwards or, you know, sidestep if, you know, that's in the game or whatever. If it's if it's a 3D fighter, if it's a 2D fighter, you're gonna have sidestep. So, um, this, you go to combat lessons, right? If you go to combat lessons and you go to universal tactics, they give you an introduction. This book is a, collect a collection of ancient manuscripts on the art of combat that were written in one of the Holy Roman Empire's great citadels, right? Now, I, I am not sure if they're talking about the art of war, like the art of war, the book, right? Uh, but this is so underappreciated. They put this in here. If you read through this, if you're learning fighting games and and soul and you have soul caliber, say for instance, even if you're not learning soul caliber, right? And you're learning Tekken or you're learning Street Fighter or you're learning Undernight in Birth, whatever game you're learning, these first seven lessons are probably the things that you want to read. These these things you probably should just read them and take them in deeply, and 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 always think about them. So you have first strike, choose your distance, watch your surroundings, deal more damage in one blow, restrict your enemy's movement, destroy ironclad defenses, mind games. Now, I'm gonna go through these. I'm just gonna kind of like I guess I guess we can read through them. They're not that long but they're important they're very important so there i did read through it a little bit and while i do agree with some things some people might take certain things in a way where it's like oh well, they're telling me to continue mashing um not exactly but i can see where they're going with some of the stuff so with first strike it says survival on the battlefield can be summed up thusly Attack and prevent your opponent from attacking. In other words, strike first. Even the most stalwart of warriors flinch and break their stance when struck. Now, when I the first thing I think about when I hear even the most stalwart of warriors flinch and break their stance when struck is to me that means say for instance you attack somebody with a with with a string. You attack somebody with a string and they block it right if they don't know what your frame data is or they don't know whether you're at advantage or disadvantage they might try to attack they might try to press buttons when they're not supposed to press buttons even if they're a really good player so if you can if you can force your opponent to press buttons when they're not supposed to press buttons or bait them into getting hit by things because they're either guarding wrong or pressing buttons when they're not supposed to or hitting them when they're down or you know catching them off guard with something baiting them into doing something that you can with punish things like that so like if you're if you're attacking them they're they they will they will slip up everybody can get hit even if they're even if you're not as good as someone else the other person can get hit but just because you can hit them and take some health off of them doesn't mean that you're gonna win the fight dude when you take some health off of somebody it could just mean uh you know you you got a couple of hits now if you have the life lead or if you pay attention to whether you have the life lead or the other person has the life lead you should change the way you play if you have the life lead you shouldn't be doing things that put your character in danger of losing life but you should be poking and doing safe things so that uh, you can try to maintain that life lead and then they have to come to you and then they will and then you force them to make mistakes to lose the round 
if they come at you and you make mistakes and then they gain the life lead, if they continue to rush down and do things that are unsafe to try to take risks to get a bigger life lead, then they're putting their life on the line to try to win more. And then you can stop them in some type of way by taking advantage of the unsafe things that they're doing to gain the life lead back. Stuff like that, right? This is what I understand about fighting games. I'm not the greatest player in the world by any stretch of the imagination, but you can still understand how fighting games are supposed to work. And if you can understand how fighting games are supposed to work, you can improve a lot through each match. Even if you get upset at losing matches, you can you can come at you can come at each match and and, and take something away from it, right? So uh, we'll continue with with this. And uh, every second they spend recoiling from an attack is a second they cannot attack you. If they if they can't attack you, they can't hurt you. And so uh, for <laughs> what? And so for stalling your opponent is the key to survival. So stalling your opponent is the key to survival. You gain the life lead, basically what I was saying. You gain the life lead and make it so that they you don't put yourself in too much danger and make them trip up and make mistakes. Skill warriors strike quickly, unbalance their foes, and don't let up until their enemies are defeated. Don't let up until your enemies are defeated is kind of a... You, you, you don't let up in the fight. But that doesn't mean to always rush down and press buttons and get in their face and do things all the time. Now, there are some rushdown characters that that is what they do or they're momentum based characters where you want to keep up the momentum and rush down hard. Somebody like, I guess, in this game would be Grow. That I know he is a very momentum heavy character and uh, he rushes you down like he is like probably the main rushdown character in the game, in my opinion. Um, he's, he's very confusing. He, he doesn't let up and he continues to attack you with mix ups so that you stay off your, to you know, you stay on your toes and he tries to mix you up and, and put you in bad situations. I play more defensively, especially with 2B. I play a lot more defensively to get the knockdown and then start my pressure while, uh, you're on the ground with like down back two or whatever into, into aggression shift mix ups and stuff like that and grabs and 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 uh in frame advantage and knowing when i have advantage and when i'm stealing a turn and all that kind of stuff um before all else you might think to yourself how can i strike before i am struck firstly you must firstly and most importantly do not swing your weapon carelessly swing it with a thought keep the simple mantra in your heart stay calm in the heat of battle and you may very well live long enough to grow into a hardened warrior facts Facts, okay? Facts. Lesson two, choose your distance. If history has taught us anything, it is that on the battlefield, one's weapon is one's life. The, world, uh, the world's minds have conjured up all manner of weapons, but what matters most is how each weapon allows its wielder to strike the opponent first. This can be your weapons in this case, in this game are weapons, right? So uh, your weapons can also be thought of as attacks and abilities, moves, your fireballs in other games, your 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 strings in Mortal Kombat, stuff like that. Using using what you have at your disposal to gain the advantage, right? So uh, a larger weapon suits those who seek to slay the enemy forcefully before they are upon them. Beware though, such weapons are weighty and thus slower. Smaller, lighter weapons, however, allow for fast kills at close quarters. Remember, there is no absolutely perfect weapon. A weapon's aptness depends on the circumstances of battle. You must discover what distance from your opponent your weapon performs best. Longer, larger weapons work well further away, whereas shorter, lighter ones will serve you well at close range, providing you can evade your opponent's attacks long enough to strike. Know thyself, know thine enemy. Do all you can in the best way you can. There is no quicker way of reaching your true potential. Know thyself, know thine enemy. Um, know what you're capable of. 
know your own character know what your character's strengths are know what your character's weaknesses are and and with each matchup and each character you play against learn what your character can do against that character to punish that character to step out of the way of that character understand what your character understand what the other player likes to do as a player not just with that character if they like to use horizontal attacks more if they like to use vertical attacks more if what buttons they normally press when they when reversal edge uh becomes uh, comes into play um what else where your character where your you and your uh, opponent like to stand in in relation to each other when you're fighting um know what your combos are like just knowing it knowing is half the battle <laughs> knowing it's half the battle knowledge is power like shit like that um it's like this this if you if you read through these lessons and take these lessons to heart and study this stuff because you want to become a better player like this is what needs to be in every fighting game lesson three watch your surroundings the battlefield requires all your guile to survive those who enter stake their lives on winning right so you want to win so the whole point of playing against another player is to win the match now just mashing on buttons and trying to attack them faster is not necessarily going to win you a match it may win you some matches you may win some matches because you were swinging faster than your opponent but when you come with somebody who knows how to deal with that you have to be able to adapt um gone are the concepts of good and evil one cause is justified by one thing and one thing alone victory everything you do should be because i want to win so i'm going to do this thing because i want to win um what is the best way for me to seal this win against this person against this character and you and you may not and you may think that whatever you're doing is the best way to go about it until you run into somebody that knows how to deal with it so if you're doing something and it's and it's winning continue to do it but know that there may be a way around what you're doing and be aware so that when somebody does get around it or when somebody does beat it you know what you need to do to change it or to add on to your strategy so that when somebody starts beating your strategy with whatever they're doing that you know what to switch to to counteract what they're doing to beat your layer one you know um the more layers you have the better so if you have a layer one and somebody beats layer one you go to layer two and layer two should beat them if they beat layer two you go to layer three like sometimes you may go back to layer one and, and continue to do that because they've they've forgotten about it and then you go to layer layer three like layer four like however many more layers of, of things that you can pile on top of your game plan do that um know your battlefield use everything it provides you that's the walls bring outs in this game uh corners in 2d games uh in immortal combat use your use your surroundings use your interactables and injustice like stuff like that uh victory is not a simply a matter of injuring your opponent you should be uh you should be by the water side unbalance your opponent and let them take a bath <laughs> uh, should your back be against the wall step sideways uh let an aggressive opponent throw themselves at the mortar be ever aware of both your own and your opponent's positions and movement work with your surroundings and they shall work with you such harmony can see uh, such harmony can see you fell foes of far greater strength keep your eyes on your opponent and use your peripheral vision as well so you can beat somebody who's better than you right it doesn't necessarily make you better than them right but you can beat somebody who's better than you if you pay attention enough if you're able to adapt fast enough to what somebody else is doing, you can beat them even if they have more experience than you. So like you might be able to adapt really fast to whatever, you know, uh, a player is doing and how they're switching up their attacks and stuff like that. You might be able to see, you know, holes in what they're doing or you might know 
that something is unsafe that they might not know is unsafe because no one has ever punished them for it or they are using tactics against you that they've used against other people who that were that were working but may not work against you because you know how to beat it so like just pay attention to your your foes let your let your foes hang themselves and i've i've experienced this a lot with uh sidestepping in this game right so sidestepping side walking uh basically uh running you can just hold the button down right so like movement is very fluid like <sighs> compared to tekken in this game movement is very fluid compared to a lot of games i guess because eight-way run uh, lets you just move around the battlefield uh at your leisure pretty much but that's why this game has horizontals and verticals verticals are pretty strong attacks versus people who don't sidestep or sidewalk and then horizontals punish people for trying to sidewalk and sidestep everything you're doing so you you use your horizontals and you stop people and you force them to stop trying to sidewalk everything and then you can start using your verticals and your and your really strong pressure with your like, vertical attacks and stuff uh where it only attacks in front of you and they are going to take it because eventually they're going to learn that sidewalking and sidestepping is not the best thing you can do it may be the best thing you could do against some people because they don't realize that you got to stop using your verticals so much if people are sidewalking your stuff and force them to stop sidewalking with horizontals but whatever you know like you you it depends on the player you, you learn about it and you get better and you and you you know you move on to, to to being a greater player deal more damage in one blow strikes that scratch the surface of the skin will not be enough to slay an opponent when one fells a tree one must strike with all one's might felling an opponent is no different so mashing on one button with your light attacks over and over and over again is not necessarily how you're going to win a fight because if you hit somebody six seven eight nine times with light attacks this goes in any game like fighting somebody with jabs if you if you're if you're doing that, you're you're taking way, way longer to beat your opponent with these tiny little hits than to, you know, find find where find where you can get a big hit, knowing how it how advantage you are when you block something that somebody else throws at you so that you can swing at them with something. If they press their fastest button, what button can. OK, if you pr if somebody swings at you and you block it, if you're at advantage, what is the fastest thing that you can do that will come out before the fastest thing that they can do? So you pick the strongest button that's just fast enough to beat out their fastest move. And if you can do that, especially if it's a launcher, you can launch them for trying to mash, right? If you know that they're mashing the same button over and over again, you block it, you go for launcher, and if you can hit them, You'll launch them and then you do your combo you, and you get you get damage and you get a knockdown and you get pressure. So now they have to deal with this stuff. So they're either they either use meter to get up or they, they do something risky on wake up or something like that. And then you capitalize on whatever they decide to do as long as you don't get hit by it or whatever. However, landing a decisive blow is easier said than done. First, examine the techniques your way of fighting has uh, your way of fighting has to offer. For example, which are fast, uh, which for example, which are fast and test your opponent. I think I was just talking about that. Which are devastating but take time to perform. So yeah, so if you if somebody has if somebody's doing fast attacks and you have something that is uh that takes time to come out but it can come out in enough time to be a devastating blow against something that they're doing that they shouldn't be doing you do that um if you just need to take control of the of the match again you might want to use your quick attacks or whatever just to just to uh you know make your opponent stop doing things for a little bit making them back up off of you getting some breathing room so that you can think you want to use your fast attacks so you don't have to think too hard whatever horizontal 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 um and then like kind of like back up or whatever um 
using using your you know your defensive soul charge mechanic or whatever to push people off of you and using the 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 screen freeze for some time to breathe and some time to think about what am i going to do next after this after the screen comes back and i get control of my character again um because they're because they're also thinking well what am i going to do uh when when the screen is not frozen anymore uh speed and power do not go hand in hand you must understand what your techniques allow you to do once you know this select attacks that prevent your opponent from defending when they land so like if you want to if if they're blocking high a lot and you hit them with a lot of lows or if you notice that they're blocking a lot of lows you hit them with a lot of mids then then once you once they're once they're blocking your mids and then you you start throwing like stuff like that so like you mix it up so that they can't guard against everything at the same time um send them into the air or prevent them from moving then unleash your fury when you're when the hedgehog has revealed its soft underbelly the fox claims its meal you would do well to remember this so if you send them into the air or prevent them from moving that's like if you launch a character then you'll get some extra damage uh by way of a combo and like a knockdown if you prevent them from moving which is like kind of like maybe knocking them down or if you do something that is plus you do something that is plus on block like um, I forget what they're called. I haven't played this game in a long time. I'm just coming back to this game like as of yesterday. But um, you 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 use your you use the the blue lightning attacks, right? You use the blue lightning attacks, and they're all very plus on block, and they're guard breaking. They're guard breaking moves. So like say for instance, you hit them with a few of those, and they break their guard. They they you're they're they're free for the picking, right? Um, if you use a guard break move on somebody's block, even if it doesn't break their guard, they can't do anything and you're at advantage. So you get to add more things and more pressure after you do that. So once you hit somebody with a blue lightning attack, you can, it's still your turn to be attacking. So don't let up, like, don't let up if you're plus, if it's still your turn, continue to apply pressure, smart pressure, but continue to apply pressure to the opponent know how plush you are and what you can do after that that will be the most devastating thing that you can do to them if they don't block if you know they don't block because they don't know about advantage do the most devastating thing you can if you think they're going to block something and the move that you're about to do is unsafe go for something a little bit safer to to feel out the your opponent and see what they like to do after you are very plus on block see what they like to do and then you can use that information later in the match to take advantage of the fact that they do the same thing all the time when you're plus on block. Lesson five, restrict your enemy's movement. Even the safest of attacks can be costly if done recklessly, which means that if it's a safe attack, if you whiff it, you can still get trashed for it. So you just make sure that those moves that are very safe or very plus on block, you have to make sure those land because if they miss, you're going to have a bad day. They may be regarded or they may be guarded or evaded with ease, uh, leaving you right for the kill. Uh, brand the following five brand the following five tenants into your minds. Restrict your enemy's movements, making it easier for you to attack. Put your opponent on the back foot with quick strikes. Uh, straight attacks can be evaded sideways, putting you in a vulnerable position. Use the horizontal attack to stop your opponent in their tracks before unleashing them. We were talking about that there's there is no value to an attack that carves through nothing but air don't whiff things uh all your opponent has to do against attacks that barely reach is step back instead to utilize long range attacks such as charging thrusts to limit your opponent's options a fallen opponent is a sitting duck use moves that knock them down and then follow up with an attack we talked about this this is one of the quickest ways to make sure they stay down. Never go for huge strikes without making sure you have your opponent under your control. When you have them exactly where you want them, unleash your full power. So make sure that you have them where you want them and they're in their and they're behaving as you want them and then use that to your advantage. So like that's like 
the person is sidestepping all ridiculous you want to use your launcher which is a vertical attack and they're sidestepping non-stop so you 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 continuously use those horizontal attacks until you notice that the person is not sidestepping anymore you keep doing horizontal attacks until they're not sidestepping anymore until they're standing in the same spot when you approach them if they don't move then that's when you start to mix in your vertical attacks and your launchers right and stuff like that like that's that's how you that's how you get them and train them to be one way like everybody is like if if you can if you can cause that to happen you can win a lot more games as long as you're attacking when you know what your opponent is about to do or you have a very good read on what your opponent is about to do destroy ironclad defenses see an opponent who guards relentlessly is an opportunity to go for on the offense but what if your attacks never seem to get through their defenses or worse you are forced into a disadvantageous position in that case vary your techniques this is lows mids throws mix it up uh take your opponent uh make your opponent think you will strike the face then go low strikes of varied heights are more difficult to defend against you can even throw your opponent if you use a shield to thwart your opponent pin them down leaving them open to deadly strike changing the rhythm of your attacks works well the most experienced of uh, warriors skip a beat before striking attempting their uh tempting their opponent into relaxing their guard before they the true blow falls so like in this game they have a lot of those with like big giant gaps in them right where they also have if you you some stuff you can delay and make that gap bigger so like they would in essence not be able to press a button in the smaller gap so like there's a gap there and it looks like they can do something but they can't they can't even press a button but if you make that gap just a little bit bigger then they'll be like oh i can press a button here and they try and they get hit by the last attack they might get knocked down by the third hit so sometimes you finish your strings sometimes you don't finish your strings sometimes you sometimes you stagger them sometimes you only maybe go for two hits of the four hits sometimes you only go for three hits of the four hits and then you can go for two hits in a throw or three hits in a throw just different things like that and you also have to pay attention to whether your opponent knows you like to throw at a certain uh certain spot and if the, that move is a high that this that's coming for them because then they can just duck underneath it so like if you do uh two highs and you know that you know two you do two highs and the third is a high you can do two highs and then they you know they like to duck so you can do two highs and then do a mid so so you can like throw them off their game because you can't throw you can't throw somebody who ducks i don't think you can throw in the first frame i don't know how it works in this game but in mk if you're ducking and not blocking no one can throw you um unless they have a mid command grab but in this game i think it's only the starting like the start of the the duck like the start of the crouch i don't know if it's the entire crouch we could try it actually let me let me just look at this real quick so let me put the uh uh stand crouch did we did I change it? No, stand crouch. Normal. No, you okay, so this game you cannot throw. Oh, oh! This this shows that you're doing a throw. Somebody thought that it, it, it looked like he got a throw. But unfortunately, it's it was just that just shows a throw. The pink orb just shows that you went for a throw. Maybe command grabs might be a different color, you know? it's a it's a visual aid so you can't throw people who duck can you throw people who duck and and uh guard let's see if you could throw a guard you cannot in mk if somebody's guarding and ducking i think you can throw them if uh they're not guarding you can't same thing for like uh fireballs in mk fireballs in mk are highs most of them so you can duck them without blocking and if you're blocking and crouching then you'll get you'll block the fireball and take chip damage which is why you want to duck under fireballs with just down and not block so stuff like that so let's go back to uh combat lessons uh the last one standing on the battlefield is not necessarily the strongest those flexible of mind avoid death change 
they say is good for the soul it can save your life too always be adapting always be improving always know like if you don't know how to deal with something and you have no idea what to do about it in the match after the match go make the computer do it if it's not like go make the computer do it if you can for, if you can make the computer do it in training mode and see if see if the move they're doing is punishable see if you can duck it anywhere see if you can hit it in the middle of gaps see if you can do something about that move so you're not getting run down in online with that move alone where it's like somebody starts throwing that move at you and you have no idea what to do even if it's just being able to take your turn somewhere that you didn't know you were able to before you might be able to use that to your advantage because if you block the whole thing or if it's a string or something like that you block the whole string and then you know that there's a gap there that you can press a button in and they don't know that you know that you can save that for you know a time where you know it, it will it will put you in the life lead or whatever or if they do it it, it will it will put you in an advantageous situation so you can use the knowledge when you need it uh the most mind games brute force is not the only way to open your opponent's defenses and land a decisive blow battle hardy warriors aim to break down their opponent uh, physio excuse me psychologically physiologically uh they they aim to break their opponent uh they they aim to break down their opponent psychologically before going for the jugular one of the ways to do this is to goad them into attacking once successful defend and then counter this is what i was just doing with my friend yesterday uh where he was attacking a lot i was getting hit a lot and i'm like all right i need to i need to like bring the bring the the the, the match back into my terms so i just started blocking i just started blocking a lot of things to see what he was doing and then once he went for you know a regular string or something that i blocked where it was like three hits i knew that he was negative at disadvantage and i started pressing my horizontals because i knew he liked to sidestep and press buttons so if he were to press a button after his str string that i blocked i would hit him if he were to sidestep after the string that um that i blocked i would also hit them so it i would also hit him so it would just it just those that one thing using a horizontal button one one would be enough to or aa in this game would be enough to um stop two options that i know that he likes to do so like that's what you have to do and to you know take control of the match again um for example uh, you can intentionally perform a strike that an opponent can defend against tempting them into unleashing a powerful attack that leaves them open should your opponent get carried away and go for a head-on attack dodge to the side and respond with a powerful blow of your own so with 2b 2b is she's great at this because she has a move that's not necessarily safe or the best thing in the world but it's very hard to react to and know what you're going to do as long as you keep your uh keep your your attacks varied so like she has aggression aggression shift so what i like to do to people is <laughs> is this move that's one of my my main pressure starters so like i'll do this and then like she does you can hold back and she'll go into the reverse aggression shift right or you can do this and then go straight into aggression shift forward so like normally i'll do this and then do this and they have to block that right so like uh you can also continuously do aggression shift which they can't press a button on if you decide to do it again if you do this and then i do aggression shift and then i stop and i try to press a button if you're if you're ducking look my high my high whips all of it so then i have to use verticals but if you if you sidestepped if you waited for me to do this and then i did this and then you sidestepped you could you could get out of the way of it but who's gonna sidestep who's gonna sidestep who's gonna sidestep that this beats sidesteps because it's a horizontal attack so if you sidestep you're just gonna get hit right so normally people will get hit by one or two of them and then they'll block so normally i'll grab but since this guy is is ducking right it's since this guy is ducking and guarding usually uh like maybe i might go um i 
the, what did, I don't remember the button. Let me see. Uh, let me see. It's, there it is. So normally, this is the computer, so they're doing guard all. So if he's ducking, and I go for this, and it's a low, right? This is a low. Oops, my bad. This is a low. This is a mid, right? So he's not gonna, he's not necessarily gonna duck. But if I see him ducking, then I can do that, right? I can do this or whatever. And usually I'll, I'll, I'll go for that. But if I do that and then like he see, he thinks that I'm gonna go for a throw because I've been doing two, two horizontals in a throw the last three times I've done it. And then he's like, oh, he's, he's gonna go for a throw again. I could do, I can do either just another, another horizontal. I can do go one, two, three, and his and he'll duck into it, or I can like go for a, a knockdown, and then do this, and that's a guard break. So like, it, and then, and then his guard gets broken. You know, you go for you know whatever and stuff like that. So it's like mind games. It's all about messing with your opponent's mind as much as you can and getting them to kind of like beat themselves by opening them opening them up by forcing them to block certain things so that you can take advantage of knowing that they're going to do that. And if they can't adapt to what you're doing, you can control the pace of the match for as long as you want, as long as you continuously vary your attacks and pay attention to how they respond to stuff. So that's where I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop here at lesson seven at Mind Games because this is the universal stuff that goes with through every fighting game. Every fighting game that you will ever play, lesson one through seven, can apply the the rest of this stuff is specific to this game so like they'll they, they teach you about you know attacking they teach you the different types of attacks in this game how guarding works how reversal edge counters work reversal edge clashes like read all this stuff if you if you if you if you're unsure about any mechanics in the game they're all here and they explain everything they don't explain this stuff in this much detail in any other fighting game that I know. Maybe Guilty Gear, uh, maybe the, the new Guilty Gear uh, XR, uh, I don't know what the newest one is, but that one. Not Strive, maybe it's, it'll probably be in Strive 2, but like I think they they have a really good tutorial in Guilty Gear um, XR. So like they, they tell you all, and that's just beginner. Reversal edges, reversal counters, that's beginner stuff. Uh, strikes and the eight-way run, air combos, uh, Yukimi getting up, counter hits, confirming hits, timings, distance, close fighters, distance fighters, control at mid-range, countering at mid-range, break attacks, crushing an opponent's guard, lethal hits, throws. Lethal hits is the thing that my friend wanted to know about. Why was I able to just break his character down, like br literally break his character's like costume all the time because those are lethal hits. They all have specific types of properties, and if you hit them in certain situations, they will always break the character uh, in some type of way. So, throws and grapple breaks, uh, break attacks, guard impacts. Break attacks is the blue lighting attacks. Those are what I, those are what I was talking about. Break attacks are all like super uh, uh, plus on block. Um, guard impacts, uh, supplemental info. Uh, what is supplemental info? Responding to guard impacts with reverse impacts. Oh yeah, that's a that's a thing that happens a lot too. Without even having to read a lot of this stuff, I didn't even know this. All this was here until today, but a lot of this stuff I already know, like from experience and playing online a lot and and learning the game and and looking stuff up and researching and practicing and all that kind of stuff. But most of the time, if somebody does a guard impact, the person will follow up with another guard impact, and then a third guard impact will happen. Right. And that's when after this, it's like, all right, are we going to keep doing this? The smarter player usually wins the fourth one if it makes the fourth one, usually, because then when the next guard impact, when it, when that third guard impact happens, if there's a fourth guard impact, that person could have taken advantage of the situation because all you have to do is walk up to them, wait for them to guard impact and then or or do a break attack. You either wait for them to do a break attack or, I mean, excuse me, you either wait for them to do a guard impact and launch them after it recovers or not completely recover after it's, you know, after it's out and then you punish it with like a launch or something and, and destroy them. Or you just do a break attack 
after the third guard impact or after a guard impact happens, you just do a break attack. And if they guard impact, their guard impact gets broken. And you leave them wide open for attack. So, like, that's that's something else that that's really good. More levels, reversal. There's so much stuff here. Everything. Th this will teach you how to play fighting games. This will teach you how to be a good player if you read all this stuff and take it in. But this is a 40-minute video. I'm not even going to edit this video. But if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Start conversation in, in, the, in the comments. Please like this video. Subscribe to the channel. I play a lot of different games. Um, I just like, you know, posting posting videos and playing games, playing with friends, playing fighters, playing, playing watchdogs, playing... I, I play a lot of stuff. And I'm just trying to find out, you know, where I, where I want to go, and what, what I want to do with my, my content and stuff. But I just really wanted to talk about this combat lesson section in Soul Calibur 6 because it's really important. And if you have the game and you're having and you're struggling with learning and being more competitive at the game and you want to take the game kind of seriously, read through this stuff. Read through all these things. And then they have a, a section for each character telling you and giving you a base understanding of how to play each character. And if you want to learn how to beat that character, you might be able to have a base understanding of each character and use that to go, okay, well, what can I do to beat these things that people are learning from here? So, yeah. So if you made it this far and you, and you watched all this, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Peace.